if you want change, the first change that has to occur is within, not, not outside. You don't create something so that you think that people will adhere to. What you do is you create that relationship within yourself to be able to carry it out. We're called to be radically faithful. We're called to give our lives to Christ, no matter how hard it is, no matter how easy. It's important for us to remember that this is an important moment. Uh, and you are an important aspect of making the decision and creating the vision that we'll share for the future. The response of our parish, I thought, was very, very good. We had a lot of wonderful discussion. It really allowed for people to express their, uh, what they like about the Catholic Church. I think it was a great chance for people to spend time meeting other people and becoming energized. They were so happy and glad to be considered, you know, and uh, the responses they, they made, they were from the heart. I think it was important that we did this because it's been a long time since, as a Catholic Church, we've done anything to pull ourselves together and get our minds on what's truly important as Catholics. There's so much out there that we can dive into. I started uh, with a group of men, we started doing some men's ministries, and weekly we're meeting and discovering more about our faith. Well, I think the church does a lot of things well. For example, in the area of word, word we describe as faith formation, Bible study, catechesis. People enjoy going to Bible studies and book studies, not only to help grow in their faith and spiritually as well, but in fellowship with fellow parishioners or friends. And it really helps people feel more as one in the community. Now Luella, you've been, you've been very inspirational for all these years about all of how you pray. You're just so open and honest in your prayer. And en la luz del Espíritu Santo llega a nuestra parroquia a través de los diversos grupos que tenemos. O algo de lo que nosotros nos sentimos orgullosos es del programa de catecismo que tenemos. El grupo de mujeres es un grupo muy grande, como 90, 95 mujeres son las que asisten al grupo. Es un grupo donde estas mujeres vienen con hambre y sed de encontrarse con Cristo. Y eso es lo que nosotros ofrecemos. Es algo que me siento orgullosa de esta iglesia, que nosotros podemos ofrecerles un poquito más de allá de lo que ellas necesitan y quieren. Y ellas andan buscando y aquí lo reciben. De aquí, de este grupo, hemos encontrado que las personas se han acercado a la iglesia, se han acercado a los sacramentos, se han acercado más a la adoración del Santísimo y pienso que le estamos dando lo que ellas están necesitando. Reverence means that we know that God is within us. Well, tonight is whole community catechesis. It's a program where people from the parish who want to become more knowledgeable and um, it's also part of the religious education, what we used to call religious education program for the school age kids. Um, but it's more than that because it involves not just the sacramental programs, but it involves teaching so that the, it builds relationships between the individual people in the parish. And we speak of things that involve the greater community. The word is, is one of the things that we've, we've talked about it with our, with our youth uh, at, 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 at the parish and about how they want to get into what, what the Catholic teachings are all about. During Advent, we try harder to do what? It's not this simple uh, going through classes. They want it interactive. They want people to become uh, spiritual 
but as, as, they're, as they're becoming spiritual, they're also learning that and, and linking those two, the, the tradition and, the, and scripture, to all the things in their life. And sometimes, you know, the focus has just been on learning the content of our faith. And I think something we're coming to realize more and more is that, you know, information content isn't enough, as important as that is, that we really need to focus on our relationship with Christ and the church and with prayer. And you can't really teach those things. We, we need to create opportunities for our young people to experience them. You know, so I hope tonight is going to be a moment like that. Our priests do preach from the heart. You know, they do a good job pastoring, you know, leading us to the faith and to the teaching of the church. And until we really recognize that being a person of faith, being a Christian, living out that faith in our world is daring, is taking a risk, we aren't really ready to be that person of faith. We aren't really ready to live out that faith in our world. We've been baptized, we've been brought into the world. Christ is our savior, Christ is our redeemer. We kind of hear it, we hear it so much we just kind of toss it off to the side without giving a thought to what that really means. And there is all of this excitement and life and, and glorious liturgy and so much strength. That really sense of community, of communion, is found through the sacraments, through our Mass. I became part of a liturgy committee um, where I actually began to understand what does it take to create a beautiful liturgy? And it's phenomenal how many people it takes to put that together to create what we just sort of take for granted. We walk into church and there it is, flowers, music, the readings, the change in the seasons, the vestments, the everything. Everybody works so hard to put that together. Part of the liturgy is the proclamation of the word. And so when the word, which is literally the, um, uh, uh, the word or the voice of God, when that is proclaimed, it then, the priest moves to the altar and that word becomes flesh. When, when you think of the power of, of, uh, of that action, when you think about, quotes, the incarnation, when you think about the, the moment of, uh, uh, of literally Jesus becoming one with those elements which feed us um, uh, on, uh, on our life, what, what better or what more powerful act can we participate in than, uh, than the Mass? And yet, it's done every Sunday, and, it's, and it is repeated again and again and again. Uh, and it's uh, up to us to, to capture that and, and to understand that transcendence and understand that power. We, we definitely have to find a way to, to bring uh, our youth and, and certainly their parents and, and those families that, that have, have grown away from the church into our our worship areas and, and into our churches. Thanks for serving. We're in good hands, right? God bless. Thank you. And in, in, in doing that, we need to create definitely a dynamic presentation of, of the gospel message. No matter where they are in their faith journey, no matter where they are in understanding of this faith, we need to bring them in, show them the beauty, and bring everybody together. Living for others is um, uh, an aspect that Christ tells us to do, to, some, to, to forget ourselves. In the true sense, that's what you see the church doing. The church in the midst of its own personal struggles is reaching out and making sure that the, the ministries that, that Christ has empowered us to do are fulfilled. I think what we do well in the church is to teach love, what love is, and to actually practice it. The Human Concerns Committee in our parish it is, it's a gem. It's something I had no idea what it truly was until I became a part of that group, and I'm so appreciative of being part of that committee. 
Um, again, that's where our St. Vincent de Paul, our bread ministry, um, prayer shawl ministry, it, there's like 15 subcommittees that are all part of that, that are all outreach. We support St. Ben's, we support uh, repairs of the breach. Our groups do mm, things for, for the homeless. There are so many things in, in terms of, of us being a missionary parish that, that allowed us to really get excited about who we are. It allowed us to, to see that we are a universal church and that, and that in being a universal church that we are everywhere and we, we didn't even realize that. So it allowed us to sort of re, re, rediscover who we, who we were and, and all the ministries, the hospitals, the relief services, all those things that are, are across the world have, have, have come directly out of the Catholic Church. Involved and engaged in the Synod, this is a moment for a decision. A decision in which those who are participants in the, in the Synod can take hold of and can help to form and shape the life of the church for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, it's a critical moment which offers an opportunity for literally that light that we're talking about, that energy to, to shine through and to pro be proclaimed.